Alrighty, well, hello, sinners. How are you? On today's installment of the Letterboard of Truth, our quote of the day is Alf. Oh. If you were a woman or a femme person on the internet during the rise of the manosphere in 2022, you deserve financial compensation. Also, I'm fighting a gnarly head cold right now, so excuse the voice, but there was a point where every other commentary YouTuber was reacting to some batshit crazy alpha male for three months straight last year, and I was one of them. But as a woman with nose piercings and dare I say pronouns, there was only so many ways I could joke about a group of men who despise my existence, which is why I haven't made any alpha male related content in almost six months. In the meantime... I found my true calling, talking about water for 30 minutes straight. Get yourself a girl who could do both. But I've decided to come out of my alpha male hiatus when I saw Jubilee's most recent middle ground video in my subscription feed. Are men superior to women? Alphas versus betas. Gotta love a room full of men debating on how they feel about women. Granted, it was probably for the title, but calling yourself an alpha in 2023 is a choice. Jubilee will be covering a total of six topics in this video. Men are designed to want to sleep with multiple women. Submissive women are more attractive than dominating women. I am great at sex. <laughs> women should not be in positions of power. A man can be just friends with an attractive woman and a man should not cry in front of his kids. But as you can see, the original Jubilee video is an hour long and as you can probably hear, my voice is not strong enough to talk through that entire video at this time. Time, so I'll be breaking this reaction into two parts. Today, we'll discuss the first three prompts, and in the second part, we'll discuss the last three prompts. I'll make sure to upload part two in a timely manner, ideally within the next week or two, and hopefully when my voice doesn't sound like this. I'll make sure to break this video into chapters as well, so feel free to skip around at your pleasure. Speaking of pleasure, now might be a good time to bring up today's sponsor. Lilo. There's been a rising trend of self-care, both mental and physical, and that looks different for everyone. Whether that be going to therapy, getting a full night's sleep, taking supplements, or touching grass, it's important to find what works for you. And for some, that's masturbation. Masturbation is time dedicated to yourself, to discover your body, and most of the time, hopefully, reach an orgasm. As a sexual wellness brand, Lilo is more than aware of the lack of conversation surrounding the topic of masturbation. It's time to break down the stigma around pleasure and self-love once and for all. Whether you're a newbie in the world of self-pleasure or a bit more experienced, Lilo's Soraya 2 is the way to go. It's a product designed to be both beautiful and non-intimidating. Lilo Soraya 2 is a luxurious rabbit vibrator with extra soft silicone that offers optimized dual stimulation for clitoral and G-spot orgasms on a whole new level. The fully flexible, smaller arm has been redesigned to a more comfortable angle so it adapts perfectly to any body type. And there's 12 vibration settings to choose from, so there's literally something for everyone. With its elegant design, and distinct shape, the Soraya 2 is the perfect blend of power and precision. Celebrate Masturbation Month with a little help from Lilo's Soraya 2. With it, you'll unlock the joys of sex and return to the sensual basics. Click the link below if you dare to discover your body this Masturbation Month with the Soraya 2. Thank you to Lilo for supporting the channel and for helping my sinners and I celebrate this Masturbation Month. Now let's get back to your scheduled programming. I just want to make it clear right now, I know these six men do not represent the entire male community in the world. I think this is going to offer some really interesting perspectives. I'm sure I'm going to agree with some of these points and I'm sure I'm going to disagree with a lot of them. With that being said, let's get started, y'all. Men should be the stable ones. Men don't need to be crying in front of women. And ideally, they're not splitting chores. And I don't mean that disrespectfully, but I don't. I think that if a woman cannot look up to you in some way, then she cannot respect you. And if she cannot respect you, she cannot love you. Just say you're lazy and go. <laughs> I'm already upset. Also, if I remember correctly, I think this clown right here is friends with Andrew Tate. So that's cool. That's fun. Glad we're giving Andrew Tate's minions a platform.
unless if you're doing it for a bit, I think calling yourself an alpha or a beta is kind of cringe. Whatever. I'm going to wait to hear these men out. Step forward if you agree with the prompt. Men are designed to want to sleep with multiple women. I think all the alphas are going to say yes because like, you know, it's men's instinct to want to sleep with multiple women. That's just nature. That's just life. I think this topic is totally subjective. I think some people have the urge. I think some people don't have the urge and that's not necessarily based on gender or sex. While having testosterone might give you a higher sex drive, that doesn't mean everyone with a high amount of testosterone wants to sleep with multiple people. Or in this case multiple women yeah of course i definitely agree that uh men you know want to sleep with multiple women i think it's natural it's like i know what they're gonna say <laughs> also does this shirt say submissive women are sexy get the fuck out of here <laughs> I'm assuming this is his own merch. He probably sells some stupid course on how to pick up women and he's just like trying to pro himself. And if that's the case, I respect the hustle. You know, we produce over sperm and that makes us want to repopulate the earth basically. And so a lot of times what happens is, is I think that society is telling men not to do that for whatever reason. You're not going to die if you don't. How do you think so many straight women are alive? <laughs> Is that too far? But that's not how biology works. Your lifespan does not decrease based on your sperm count. Oh, sorry, I cheated on you, baby. It's just I have so much sperm in me that I gotta let loose. What are you even talking about? I'm really trying to go into this with an open mind, but it's just so f***ing stupid so far. You know, men actually want to be with multiple women because it's just a natural thing in us. This is why you hear all the time, you know, men always cheating and guys feel like they, you know, trying to hide the cheating and everything like that. And if it was natural for them to just want to be with that one woman, then cheating wouldn't even be an issue. So it's the woman's fault that men cheat because women, they're so like uptight and stupid. They won't let their husbands sleep around with whoever they want. Babe, you're such a buzzkill. Just like let me sleep with the neighbors and your best friend and your cousin and your sister. It's natural for me. Like you're trying real hard to justify cheating and that's not a good look i mean maybe this is old school thinking but it's just like for survival you need to have lots of kids mm -hmm. so someone's pregnant how do you keep multiplying you just more women right, right. not saying it's right or wrong but it's just kind of the way i think women even cheat too it's like 50 50. yeah of course not everyone is monogamous just like not how everyone is polyamorous and i think that's okay i think it's important to explore that in a healthy and consensual way where say if you're in a monogamous relationship and that dynamic doesn't work anymore for you you know the solution isn't to go out and cheat the solution is to talk with your partner see how they're feeling and if your needs don't line up it's probably best to split instead of just going behind their back breaking their trust and cheating on them with multiple partners because it's your natural instinct i like how they automatically assume that having multiple partners is cheating when there are plenty of polyamorous people in healthy consensual trustworthy relationships like it's not all just like based on deception and lying you can be honest about having multiple sexual partners if we're talking specifically men that desire to want to do it is natural in us so then therefore you're going to want to do it so i don't think it's a you know a natural thing to just be with this one woman, but at the same time, when I'm with this one woman, I only want to stay with her. It's almost like I'm lying to myself if I just want to be with her, you know what I mean? Why would I feel like they would say that it's wrong for a woman to have those same inclinations? Like, it would be betrayal if she wanted to go out and sleep with multiple men, but since you're the man and it's natural for you, obviously it's fine. Like, there's no emotion behind it, babe. Yeah, I mean, that makes perfect sense. Does it make perfect sense, Kian? But the question is, is, is that the end point? is being with multiple women, the end point. I'm of the firm belief that it is important to position yourself as a man to have the capacity to be with as many women as you possibly can and position yourself in a way where you understand female nature and you maximize your potential as a man. How is sleeping with multiple women maximizing your potential as a man? A lot of these type of guys don't see women as people. They see them as objects to possess, as trophies to win. And it's like the more women you sleep with, that means you're collecting more trophies. So you're like winning the game of life. You're winning the game of manhood. It's fine if you want to hook up with people, but if you're entering a relationship and you first both agree to be monogamous and then you just go out and cheat, that's f***ed up, right? But I think in the dating terms it's like there's nothing wrong with being multiple women are we naturally made to just always be with one person it's like if that were true then these first thoughts of being with another woman even though i'm in a committed relationship would never occur but it comes up once right. in a while 
but it doesn't mean I'm acting upon it. Like, I think it's normal to still notice other people's beauty and attractiveness when you're in a committed relationship with someone. But like he said, it's different when you act upon it. I'm not monogamous, so I have, I have a wife, I have a girlfriend, and I still, you know, from time to time, hook up with other girls. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so, and the thing is, it's it it feels regular to me. It doesn't feel like I'm trying to do it or, or, or doing it because I'm forcing myself. It just feels just natural, like it's something I want to do. You know what I mean? And so to not do it feels unnatural. Like if that's a dynamic that works for you and your relationships, that's great. As long as everyone's consenting and on board, good for you. But to assume that every man has those same values is ridiculous. But I think what's most important to identify is that a man should create choice in his life. And if you have choice, you should be able to do as you wish, particularly like in your case, like in my case, if there's no deceit. Exactly. It's the lying. That, in my opinion, is actually the overall problem when, get, when guys, you know, tend to go outside of a relationship. They lie to the woman. Right. That's the problem. Yeah. Lying is the problem. Glad we can agree on that. Like, I was a virgin for a very long time. Then one girl broke my heart. So that caused, like, a lot of insecurity, resentment towards the other side, right? That seems like the origin story for a lot of these red pill alpha dude bros. It's like one woman does you dirty and now you just hate the whole gender. Really? The problem is you have guys who are monogamous, but they're monogamous because they're forced to be monogamous in a way meaning that they have no choice because they don't have the skill to attract multiple women. And a lot of times they'll use that as virtue signaling. I would never do such a thing. Well, actually, bro, you can't. I don't think you should force yourself to be in a monogamous relationship if you're polyamorous and vice versa. I think everyone should be allowed to explore their preferences in a healthy, consensual way. I think, I guess, the problem is, like, the overgeneralization that these dudes are making. Can the disagree a step forward? I remember when I would, like, go on tour and things like that. My friends would always try to encourage me to, like, hook up with girls that were on to me. I do love this dude style. Very TikTok e-boy, but, like, I'm vibing with it. I've been with multiple women, and I've been with one woman. And being with one woman is just so peaceful. Telling young men that they're born this way and that they should feel this way, it can really not do damage, but just sort of make you second guess things about yourself. It just goes to show that even men are harmed under the patriarchy. Cause like there's this idea that in order to be a real man, you need to be this like buff macho dude who sleeps with multiple women. And if you're a man and you don't live up to that standard, then it's like you're worthless in the eyes of this alpha red pill mindset. And this sort of generalized thinking is very damaging to men, especially when it comes to sex, because you shouldn't force yourself to have sex when you're not ready or sex when you're not feeling it. I think this prompt is just very subjective and the alpha males are trying to make it objective. I think that we should promote choice and what feels right to you. So in your particular case, I would never tell you to sleep with multiple women. I think you might be doing the right thing to do exactly what you're doing and not do it or stop doing it. It's not about pushing it on the young men, but I'll tell you, there's a lot of young men that have a demon inside and maybe are really upset and frustrated with themselves because they feel a certain way. And it's like, oh, I'm coming out the closet. I'm straight. <laughs> what the f***? To all the brave young men watching who have come out as straight, I see you, I hear you, and you're valid. Also, this idea that he's promoting that like every guy has a demon inside that is going to be let out if they don't have frequent sex with multiple people is kind of dangerous to push. This just seems like very weird. <laughs> and that's an understatement. You know, or, or super straight or too straight. Super straight? We're bringing that back? Me to you, I tell you, if that you don't feel good doing that, man, I wouldn't do it at all. Yeah, I, I agree. In your situation, well, what, what was happening, and this is what I think a lot of times what happens is you have guys who will have sex with multiple women because they're trying to fill a void. Right. So it shouldn't be about filling a void. It should be about you actually desiring. So you don't desire to do it, so which is why you shouldn't do it. But there are guys who desire to do it but then they're suppressing their desire and then it's doing the same thing as you not wanting to do it. Like they feel they feel weird about not doing it, but they want to. Whereas you felt weird doing it, but you didn't want to. I feel like me and him agree, but for different reasons. <laughs> I believe the reason we do it a lot is because it's, it's looked upon as a great thing for men to have multiple women. Women are shamed for that. Shamed totally. I have one son and two daughters and I know the difference of how I felt when they were 15, they're in their 20s, now they were 15 versus him having multiple partners or my daughter. Derek, my man, you're killing it. Like, 
just took the words right out of my mouth. There is a societal pressure of, you know, needing multiple partners. And I think that has been pushed on to women, too, with hookup culture. And I think a lot of people are being forced into believing this idea that you need to sleep with multiple people in order to feel fulfilled or in order to feel worthy. And I simply don't think that's true. So if I, if I could stroke a check for a million bucks and never feel that feeling again, I absolutely would. I really, really would. It's something that I really hated myself for, and I felt very apart. I grew up in the South, South Louisiana, I was a Bible Belt, and I felt very distant from people around me because I had this urge in me and could not understand why I was so different. Like the biggest self-hate I've ever felt in my life is over this particular subject. I thought I was broken. And, and I understand you. And me, again, I'm gonna come back with, you know, just being around, but then, me, I'm bisexual. Bicon, king, love it. And I've been committed for 30 years. Doesn't that I don't have that desire. It's my character to say, this is my person, and that's who I want to be with. What I was under the impression with that question was, are we biologically DNA right. created yes, for that? Right. I say yes, but I love and I agree with what we're saying here. It's like, but as men, right? In the culture and awareness and being a human being, having a consciousness, choice, language, we can choose not to. We can go against those desires or urges and stuff. If you feel that desire and you're honest with your partner, I believe that is true. Do I believe that we are biologically meant to, we just biologically want to sleep with more people because we have a penis between our legs and not a vagina? I don't. True. Like I said, it's all subjective. This desire is not like a one size fits all. And they're trying to make that the case. If you want to sleep with multiple people, you don't have to explain yourself. You don't have to say it's like natural or like you need to do this. No, if you just want to be polyamorous and you want to have multiple partners, that's fine. Just own up to it. Well, let me ask you this, though, because you said you're bisexual. So does, that means you're attracted to men and women, right? So if you're with a woman, boom, aren't you also attracted to men? So wouldn't you want a man and a woman? No. So you're just like, I just want one and that's um, I made a commitment. If you don't know this, I used to ID as bisexual for a number of years before I came out as a lesbian. And back when I was bi, aka a closeted lesbian, I had like a couple people ask me, if you marry a man, aren't you going to miss the opposite gender or vice versa? And I used to say, no, I'm committing to a person, not a gender. And although I don't ideas bisexual anymore. I still think that's true. I think people who are actually bisexual can attest to that, that you are committing to the person. While you may still find other people attractive and that goes for anyone, you know, like this guy said, it's about your character. It's about choosing a person. You're choosing to remain loyal to your life partner. But if we reject that idea that it's not natural, then we can't move past it if that's something that someone wants to do. But do you agree it's just men? Do you agree with that statement that it's just No, I think it's women too. Okay. I, That's I, where I yeah. disagree. Oh, no, because we were just, just talking men. Right. I, I agree that it's men and women. So what I'm interpreting from that statement is that everyone, regardless of gender, has the desire to sleep with multiple people, biologically speaking. I simply don't think that's true. It's like a very general statement for, you know, a population with 7 billion plus people. And like that other guy said, I think it's more of a matter of a temptation temptation. While temptation is not always a bad thing, you know, that doesn't mean you want to act on them all the time. I think like the urges and things are okay until you act upon it. Um, and that's when both adults just have to have a conversation about, you know, this isn't working out for me. I still want to, you know, s sleep around or whatever you want to call it. It sounds like some people want to have their cake and eat it too. That's what I'm saying. So yeah, like I agree with Anthony. Like at first I was interpreting it as like an infidelity sort of thing that like men are more biologically inclined to cheat. It's okay to end relationships when it's not working out. Not to say that you should go around and recklessly end your relationships when they become too inconvenient. Just like Anthony, the king in the red cap said, you know, it's important to talk with your partner if something's not working out anymore. I think the real difference here is communication. Submissive women are more attractive than dominating women. I think all of the alphas are going to agree. I'm pretty sure all the betas are going to disagree. Personally, I'm going to disagree. Ooh. 
I think one of the most beautiful things about love is being able to fully take care of a woman. Tell me your love language is acts of service without telling me. Like every fairy tale that was ever written for all of time was about a man saving a woman from a castle and a dragon, right? Or some sort of scenario like that. And I think that's absolutely beautiful. And I have nothing against women being empowered, but I do feel like the happiest women in the world are the ones that look up to a man and that he can fight every day to love her and love his kids and his family and provide. Did you ask every woman in the world? I believe a woman can admire a man and it's very, very, very healthy. Am I saying that somebody that doesn't do that is not a man? No, I would never. But ideally, the relationships that are gonna work, the relationships in let's say the 30s, 40s, 50s, or or whenever you know we're, we were having nuclear families stay together before we went off the gold standard and inflation pushed everybody to have, two people have to have a job? Yeah, dude, I do. I think those relationships are much happier when the man could lead a house and be proud of going out and going to work every day and fighting for his family. Weren't the 50s also the time where antidepressant prescriptions among women were at its highest? Am I remembering that correctly? Tell me again how women are happier being submissive to their husbands. I don't know, dude. I think I have a unique perspective in that I've worked with a lot of high performing women that operate in this dominant role. And I work with them for the purpose of helping them be able to reintegrate with that more submissive, connected, intuitive part of themselves that really is connected to their bodies, that if they were connected to their bodies, wouldn't be as dominant, at least in the presence of men. And with every woman that I've worked with, there is this deep, deep, deep desire, regardless of what she says externally, to submit to the leadership of a man that she knows can properly hold down the emotional space and really put her interest at the forefront. It's almost like people are multifaceted human beings and can desire one thing from their workplace and another thing from their romantic relationships. Like you can be a boss babe in the office and then want to come home and be taken care of by your partner. Like those two things can coexist. To have this like black and white way of looking at life and relationships is very narrow minded. There's a lot more nuance that exists that should be acknowledged in order to have a healthy, successful relationship. Truly, deep down, every woman would love nothing more than to be more feminine in a role, in a family, and, and take on that either that motherly role or that nurturing role, or the role that feels supportive to the overall mission of a man. It's just got to be a man worth getting behind, and weak men are the reason why this is a problem. Mm. Mm. Yeah, the reason why I'm a lesbian is because there are so many weak men. If only I had a strong man in my life. <laughs> It's fine if he has a preference for submissive women. But again, with the generalizations, just like assuming that everyone feels the same way you do. Quite frankly, some women shouldn't be mothers and some people shouldn't be parents. And not everyone has the desire to be a parent. Case in point, look at the workplace. You don't see women applying for jobs to be power line guys or hang steel at steel companies. They're not picketing outside of the United States Army being like, why won't you draft me? To be fair, a lot of the industries he presented are male dominated industries. And when women try to enter them, they're not exactly treated the most fairly. So that could probably have something to do with why there aren't a lot of women in those fields. I don't think they're trying to be men. I think what they're realizing is that the qualities that they were looking for in men, they've always had it within themselves. They know now that they can do things on their own. I don't think they necessarily need a man, but I think what they're looking for is that intimacy to have a partner. But I don't think that they require one. Anthony, you're a king. I love you, buddy. I heard you say that, you know, women want to be the men's equal, but you, you don't see, and maybe this could just be a societal thing, that a societal pressure, but you don't see women doing things that could make them equal to the men. You don't see the women approaching the men. You don't see the women paying for the dates. You don't see the women uh, being more assertive to the man. You see what I'm saying? So where is that at? Because they got options. They got so much more options than well, men. I'll tell you what you do see. You see a high level of women on antidepressants more than ever, right? And I think that's a bunch of women trying to cope with trying to be like a man. Huh? So the rates of depression and antidepressant usage are up because all these women are trying to be like what? As terrible as this may sound, men think they have more importance in women's lives than they actually do. And to think that like nothing else could have a significant impact on a woman's mental health is like ignorant, in my opinion. Are you more attracted to a woman that has a high paying job or to a woman's beauty? 
That doesn't matter. It does matter. It does matter. It's a good <laughs> to me. I love it. The guy asks him a question, and then when he doesn't give an answer that he's not satisfied with, he's like, no, you're not. I know you. I know what you want. Maybe, like, when you're making these blanket statements about what men want, don't be surprised when a <laughs> man disagrees. I think it's also that societal pressure that tells you at the same time you have to have multiple women. They're telling the women you have to have that one man, that husband, by a certain age, have kids by a certain age, there's more pressure on them than there is men. And for, you know, lack of a better term, I think men have gotten off a lot easier because women have so much pressure um, and they get judged more harshly than men do. Like, yeah, I would say men are also pressured to have children, especially in religious communities. But I do think that stigma or that pressure is more so on women because then we're looked at as there's something wrong with us if we don't want children. For talking about back then when men used to go home, bring home the bacon or whatever, you know, the, the domestic violence rate was pretty high during that time. And I'll also say that for people of color, we never really had the luxury of working one job. So my parents, you know, their parents before them, everybody always had to work, men and women. So there was always that equal opportunity for them to be able to see that they could do it together as opposed to put that one pressure. That's a good point that like I didn't even think of. Like the idea of a nuclear family does come from a place of privilege in a sense because it's assuming that a family of four or five, six people can live off of one income. And sure, while that would be great and, you know, maybe an ideal situation for a lot of people, in reality, that's not the case. Like assuming that everyone can just like settle down and become that perfect nuclear family comes from a place of privilege. If you guys find submissive women more attractive than dominant women, is that because it makes you feel more validated as a man? Or is there something there that you feel like feeds into your purpose as a man? Yeah, well, it's a balance. If, I, if I'm a dominant person, I need a submissive. If, if I meet a dominant woman, we're going to butt heads. What if that changes? Like, what if she grows? Because I would, I would love everybody to be able to grow throughout life. What if she starts becoming more dominant? Does that that like a are you saying if she starts becoming more dominant in a relationship more dominant or equal to your dominant oh yeah she's gone she's finished <laughs> we're done this feels like the case where like at the drop of a hat this guy would leave a relationship if it feels inconvenient for him i'm making a generalization right here which i know i'm being a hypocrite but like i'm just going based off of what he said in the video look i got children i don't need somebody else to take care of and i love your thing about you know the prince charming and everything but you know what i need I need a badass woman who can match my badass energy. That's why what he was saying, I was going to bring that fact up too. A lot of men are depressed because they put it on this shield of I have to be the leader. I have to do this. And you know who goes to get help first? Women. Yeah! In general, from what I've seen online, a lot of these type of alpha male slash red pill guys don't see women as equals, which is why they prefer them in a submissive position. That totally makes sense. I think if we're talking about men not ever dealing with their emotions, it makes sense for this argument that you guys are talking about. But I'm the firm believer I've gotten a lot of therapy in my life. I've done a lot of things for myself personally to resolve my own internal conflict. Good for you, Ken. I'm proud of you. So a real man is someone that understands himself deeper at an emotional level, has taken the time to do that so he can show up as a rock, not so he can show up more emotionally. Problem is, is that if you're super emotional, when we talk about the whole thing of being submissive or dominant, your woman is going to dominate you because you're so emotional. Emotionally unstable. Yes. Let's say that. Exactly. It's emo let's, let's stop using emotion. Let's start using emotionally unstable. Right. Keen's starting to win me over. I'm glad that they're making the distinction between being emotional and being emotionally unstable. Obviously, there's a difference. Like, showing emotion doesn't mean that you're an unstable or unreliable person. And by stigmatizing emotions, again, that's why there's such a high depression and suicide rate among men because they don't want to express their emotions because they've been taught to view them as bad. All right, not to sound like a broken record, but the patriarchy hurts everybody. I mean, you guys know dominatrix exists for a reason. A reason. <laughs> Um, and by the way, I used to personal train at Dominatrix. You guys are their clients. Yeah. <laughs> um, not me, cowboy. I'm being serious. Like, it's a very hidden thing. I used to, I used to date them. Okay, Kevin. Go off, King. I've dated submissive women before. I find them highly annoying. Sometimes I just want somebody to pick a choice. I like her places. She's got better taste than I do when it comes to that kind of stuff. So please, go ahead. We do butt heads once in a while because she is dominant. Does that mean she lost respect or attraction for me? We have, no. 
Not at all. No matter if you have similar or opposing personality types, conflicts are going to come up in a relationship. That's natural. That happens when you know someone for a while. Like, just because you disagree, that doesn't mean someone automatically loses respect for you. It's not really about dominance and submission in this case. It's more just about emotional maturity in a relationship. One of the things you said is like, when you and your partner or girlfriend get into something and it's like a little heated, like, I get off on that. Me, I totally don't get off on that. Like, I need, I don't need any back talk. I don't need any lip. I don't need any attitude. I need, it's my way or the highway. He sounds very pleasant to be around. <laughs> if you were to have a healthy discussion about a decision, which she disagrees. She says, I disagree. Right. She says, so if we say, hey, we want to do, she wants to do A, B, and C. And I say, no, nah, I want to do D, E, and F. Right. We're, doing that. We're, we're doing D, E, and F at the end of the day. Now, I'll, I will listen to what she says. And if I, if I think A, B, and C sounds better, then I say, okay, yeah, let's do A, B, and C. Cause but you that don't sounds want bad talk in the first place. No, no, no. Did that's even in no, the conversation. No, that's, that's what I'm saying. If we're having a conversation, that's cool. I'm saying the final decision, though, is mine. I guess that I like that he mentioned that he's willing to hear his wife or his female partner out. But like at the end of the day, you know, a healthy, good relationship is about compromise. And the final decision, especially when it comes to big decisions in regards to the relationship, should be up to both people in the relationship. Like, I don't know what some of them are describing doesn't seem like a healthy dynamic, in my opinion. I agree that honestly, it is a choice. It's a preference. You know, we shouldn't speak upon like everybody. Obviously, like it's always a gray area. It's a range. It's not it's not one or it's not one side or, or the other. Yeah. Like, you know, our emotions, our character traits, they're all on a spectrum at the end of the day. It's not just like submissive, dominant. It's a scale. We all fall somewhere in between. But the, the thing I want to talk about more is the fact that like you guys keep saying that like this is what women want or that like all women want this. Who are we to decide what women want? Because first of all, we're not women. And second, just because of our personal experiences in our lifetime about the people we, we've interacted with, I feel like that's something we need to take a step back from and clarify that like, no, this is just my personal opinion. Valid, totally valid. I've noticed a lot of these alpha dudes state their opinions or preferences as fact. Like it's fine, you know, at the end of the day, if the gentleman in the purple shirt, what's his name, Mr. Locorio, I apologize if I mispronounce that. It's fine if he wants a submissive woman. I think the real problem comes in with assuming that every man wants a submissive woman or every woman wants a dominant man. I would say a relationship dynamic that is optimal has deep connection where you could say there's a deep friendship there, but also there's sexual polarity. And I've seen dynamics where there is a great friendship there and there is connection and they do live very cohesively. But when the woman is more dominant, the majority of the time, I have yet to see a dynamic where consistently over time, there is strong sexual polarity on her end in a dynamic. But again, like Eddie stated, like you can't just like take your own personal experiences and assume that's what everyone wants. All right, so we've reached our final prompt where they're gonna be discussing their skills in the bedroom. I'm very curious to see how these gentlemen answer. I am great at sex. <laughs> oh, come on, man. <laughs> I mean, I have a lot to learn. <laughs> <laughs> Just like with the other two prompts, say it with me, y'all. Everyone has their preferences. Everyone has things they like and don't like in the bedroom. But I would say overall, what makes someone a good sexual partner is number one, the skill to please. But, you know, of course, that can be improved over time. And two, listening to the person you're sleeping with, listening to their cues, asking them what they like and don't like, and just being receptive and open to their needs. Bro, this was a chance to redeem yourself. No. No, no, I know, but it's just hard. Oh, I'll leave Kevin alone. He's keeping it real. Actually, yeah, I'm gonna go back. Oh, no, sorry. Oh, really good. With my partner, my my wife, I'm able to not only connect physi physically, but also emotionally. You know, as and then I think that's the biggest trick I've learned. Not trick, but the thing I've learned about my years of being with my partner. You have to sort of like you know, keep the spice going. I would imagine that, you know, being together for 30 years, you know, you're going to go through many fluctuations in your sex life. And, you know, like he said, you have to find ways to keep the spice going. And, you know, I'm sure in the meantime, you're developing a lot of skills. And I would imagine know what your partner likes in those 30 years. I'm better at sex with women I care about. Yeah, you know, so sure. I think, and, and yeah. me being a player and a guy who goes out and talks to a lot of different women, if with my girlfriend or like my wife or whatever like that, 
sex is sex would be great yeah i would typically agree that like sex with someone you love is better than just hooking up with random people for your skill i can't speak to obviously but like i would say overall the feeling is better when you're committed to the person you're sleeping with my wife and i we have this thing we call the love menu we found that in our young relationship sometimes the other person might be tired and like turn but that's hurt feelings that makes you kind of do this type of thing. So what we did is we come up with a love menu of like, here's appetizers. I might not be ready for the full course tonight, but here's your appetizer because I know you like this or here is your dessert or here's your main course meal. And we broke it into those things. So when we do come to each other and we need that connection, it's not just like, I'm tired. I don't feel like it. It's kind of like, well, what's going to happen? We have a full course meal tonight. Or we're just going to have some appetizers. I like that. That's cute. And if it works for them, that's great. And just because you're in a long-term relationship with a partner, that doesn't mean you should neglect your own needs because you want to please them. I think it should be a healthy balance. But, you know, listening to your partner's cool and great and should be normal in all relationships. And I love that. I love that you talk about the amount of intention that you live with in regard to making sure that you're always evolving with it, always making sure that it's spicy. You just care. I think if you have a genuine care for the other person that you're involved with, then maybe you're not great right then and there, but it will eventually develop into being something that way. So I love that care that you demonstrate with that. It's like riding a bike. You know, the more you practice, the better you get. And I do find, by and largely, it's kind of like you could have the alpha beta argument. I do that thinking coming in kind of in a, in a dominant way. There's a reason Fifty Shades of Grey is so popular. Uh, I don't think Fifty Shades of Grey is really... <laughs> <laughs> the great reference you're thinking of because I certainly did not watch Fifty Shades of Grey thinking "Ooh, look at that dominant man I thought "Ooh, who gave that movie the green light <laughs> that's about how you touch her how you have your hands on her the way you take over her in that way and that's okay just knowing and seeing that expression and seeing things that happen and as a result of that is enough for me to know where I stand on the subject I agree with that energy that take control energy. And I think one woman does love that. But sometimes my wife likes to take control and I love it. Well, get up there, girl. Talk. Get up there, girl, and do what you gotta do. Hell yeah. I don't wanna get naked, but I have sex tattooed on my chest. <laughs> Can I? <laughs> well, it wouldn't take much. Huh? Yeah, it's, out, it's, it's right here on my rib. Okay. Hell yeah, man. That's fucking awesome. Just loud and proud. Sex. No subtlety there. I disagree because I just feel like it's such a typical conversation and belief that every guy believes are great at sex. And to be real, when I talk to my girlfriends, none of them have good sex with guys unless it's, like you guys said, your partner. Then you can get better at it, right? And you know what they like. Unfortunately, even in committed relationships, there are some men, I'm not saying all, who don't care to learn about their partner's anatomy, especially if they are dating someone who is assigned female at birth. They don't care to learn about the structure and how to pleasure someone with that structure. Again, I'm not saying it's every guy, because I'm sure there's plenty of guys who know what they're doing. I'm just saying, all right? I'm just saying. So that's what I mean. Like, I think I'm great with my girlfriend but if i was to generate and say like i'm great at sex i'd be like oh i didn't you know almost every girl i slept with before probably never even got off really but to say like i'm great at sex you know i can bring a dildo in you know like <laughs> it's just like i mean i'm nothing against that like i, I, I like all kinds I of i didn't things. mention a dildo <laughs> I like his self-awareness. You know, there's a lot for me to learn even now with my partner. And I just like to say I'm great. I also, I don't say that to myself because I think that blocks me from something that I might not be good at, actually. No, I agree. I, I, don't, I completely agree with the aspect that like, honestly, there's always room for growth. Going around saying, thinking that you're like the best is like some, is not something that I agree with, but more so that like, especially with someone that, you know, like a partner, like that you actually want to give like, give the effort into you learn you know like it doesn't always have to go like perfect the first time you know you pick up things like everyone's different you don't always have to be humble and modest but at the same time if you overestimate your skills in the bedroom that might prevent you from wanting to learn and grow in that aspect and that could be detrimental to your sex life in the long term i think when that question says I'm great at sex. Like we, you, it, that that to me tells me you could line up ten girls and nine out of ten, you would know exactly what to do. Sometimes with it's that. just like a confidence. Yeah. Thing. Like I am confident that I can achieve good sex. Exactly. I think it's a balance of both, in my opinion. And so what I'm saying is, I can be really great with this one other girl, but I choose not to, and I do that purposely. And the reason why I do it purposely is because, like I was saying earlier, when we talk about friends with girls and all that other stuff, is that. 
women have to earn good <laughs> you understand what i'm saying so <laughs> if i'm if i'm with a woman where i just met you at the bar and we're just hooking up i'll give you i'll give you some like i said i should say women should earn great but i'll give her some good but it ain't gonna be great because you haven't earned it. You're not my girl. You haven't done anything. Not gonna go the extra mile for her. I get the sentiment. Like if it's like a one night stand thing, obviously you're not gonna know the ins and outs of their sex life and their desires and stuff like that. But like I don't know, it's like a weird way to say it. I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> Who thinks that great sex is more mental? I think that good sex is physical. Great sex is mental. Big brain right here. I mean, it's more. I think it's more mental. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Who thinks great sex is more physical? The reason why I sat down and then I stepped back is because sitting down, it was just kind of like that societal pressure of, you know, we all agree like men have to be uh, really great at Good sex. <laughs> and I had to check myself out of my ego and take a step back because it can't be nine out of 10. It has to be 10 out of 10. I know I've had, you know, one night stands and I can't account for every single partner that I've had if they had a great experience or not. I could just be honest with myself and say I did my best, but you know, for whoever is going to be my partner next, you have to have that, like, that sense of, like, open-mindedness. Gold star for you, Anthony. <laughs> He's so, like, humble and, like, real. I love him. Women's needs are a lot different than men's in bed. So what might be, you know, easy for you, like a quick one, too, they're expecting, you know, maybe more foreplay or more physical intimacy or, you know, and with the whole, like, BDSM with, like, Fifty Shades of Grey, I think that appeal to like a certain subset of women and their fantasies but i don't think that accounts for all women if you've actually seen the 50 shades of gray franchise first of all i'm so sorry it's not a good dynamic and pardon my french here christian gray is a controlling <laughs> he's also terribly cringy which is more of a crime in my opinion we are at the 38 minute mark of this jubilee video and i'm gonna cut it off there i'm very curious to hear what you guys think of this first half of jubilee's most recent middle grade episode i was pleasantly surprised because i feel like they had like a really great conversation i thought the alphas and the betas would butt heads more but i'm surprised to see that they were actually like very respectful and open and honest and even though i don't agree with you know a lot of what the alpha males said i do respect them for coming out and you know listening and being open-minded and same with the beta males they seemed really cool especially derek and anthony i love you guys my kings you guys are great i'm really curious to react to this last half of the Jubilee episode. In the meantime, please let me know your thoughts. Thank you so, so much for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a tiny, tiny thumbs up and subscribe down below. I promise I won't sound as hoarse and congested in part two, but I love you guys. Thank you for being here and I'll see you next time with a brand new video. Bye.